now uh coming live uh what's up everyone i'm back on like my personal channel for the first time in a while i've been on the all zero channel for a while which has been a lot of fun looking to grow our youtube and twitch presence and then uh back on the personal channel today to talk with justin chow and we literally like i feel like we've been hanging out and like been friends for a long time we like literally talked for the first time last week i guess like that was the yeah. very first time right <laughs> yeah very first time and i'm like yo james where you at like, <laughs> well, let's kind of yeah this is like a whole new world i guess that we live in where i feel like i'm yeah. making many more new friends online than i had been before so that's really nice yeah. um anyway so i like i feel like there's a million different things that we could talk about but like the general category of what I'm interested in. And I think people seem to be pretty interested from comments that I've seen on Twitter and, and hopefully people are excited here in the chat. Um, it's just like the idea of like the world as a developer beyond coding. And there's a lot like from, from on your end, like social media and videos and just like having a brand and a personality. And there's a whole lot of things that go into that. So I like, this is gonna be a relatively open-ended conversation. I think probably similar to me being on your podcast, shout out to Chow Code's podcast that everybody should go check out. Um, actually, while I do that, let me grab the link and I will throw it in the chat. Um, so maybe this is just kind of an extension on that. And then <laughs> yeah. also uh, for people that are in the chat, if you have questions, I, I mean, I think we're probably pretty open. Uh, just throw them in the chat 100%. and we'll uh, we'll talk about those as well. So, um, one, shout out to everybody that's here. We've got a good audience so far. We've got people chatting. I like that. I'm super excited. Do you want to give like your like really quick intro, just who you are, what you do, that sort of stuff? Yeah, sure. So um, I go by Chow Codes on Instagram. Um, that's kind of where my main audience is. I go by Chow Codes on YouTube. I mean, pretty much my whole personal brand is just built off this whole Chow Codes um, thing. Uh, I started my Instagram September of 2019. And um, the sole purpose of that whole thing was just to document my process being a self taught dev. Um, I'm transitioning over from an IT help desk position, or well, was transitioning over from a uh, IT help desk position, now unemployed, but I have been self teaching myself code since then. And um, branched out to multiple social media platforms since then on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, you know, all that stuff. So just been hustling grinding and just coding all day long so that's pretty much me yeah so like i've always been super inspired i've gotten to work with a lot of people who are either self-taught or go through boot camps or just like quote unquote do your non-traditional route and i've always thought that was super inspiring because me like i went to college and they asked me what i wanted to study and i was like uh, i don't know computer science sounds fine like literally having no idea what it was <laughs> and yeah. it worked out right but it was kind of a default for me like i ended up loving it but i didn't know that like i didn't have a dream that i was like actively pursuing i was just in college and like doing my thing right and mm -hmm. i feel like people that are like grinding doing the stuff that you're doing people that are going to boot camps self-learning youtube videos all that kind of stuff like it i have a lot of respect for that because it like it shows passion it shows dedication and all that kind of stuff um so for you like you you did some amount of college but didn't finish right so you yeah okay yeah so i went to i went to community college for like maybe a year and a half like close to two years um not anywhere close to being like a computer science major i in, originally went in uh, as a nutritional science uh, major um and then like slowly veered off into like this black hole of i don't know what i want to do <laughs> um and then i think like somewhere in between that I, I decided I was like, okay, college isn't just for me. So I quit, I left and then eventually did like a class for IT at some point. I don't remember exactly what year. So did that for like six months and then didn't get a job out of that and then went to work for a computer store for a year and then the rest is history in terms of that and just wiggled my way into a consulting yeah. agency. That's crazy. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so I want to shout out like a really funny comment. And this is like, you probably experienced this too. So Danny Thompson, who um, is local in Memphis, he uh, was part of the boot camp that I taught uh, last year and is super active in the community, does all sorts of amazing stuff, has um, a super incredible story for all of that, getting his first job, like self-teaching, going through boot camp, that sort of stuff, but also has just become this incredible brand on Twitter. 
and uh, someone commented in the chat to say, oh my God, is this Danny from Twitter? Like the, the real Danny from Twitter? And I don't know like <laughs> if you've experienced that, like has anyone seen you in like one platform and be like, oh my gosh, I've seen your stuff like on Instagram or YouTube, like that sort of reaction? Yeah, um, I, I have mostly on LinkedIn. Um, okay. People will like come across from me. It's like, yo, I saw you on Instagram. <laughs> Your posts are so cool. Like let's connect or like, um, on YouTube, uh, I'll get that more. So, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, yo, your, your, your posts on Instagram are so sick, but I didn't even know you had a YouTube channel. Your video yeah. just kind of popped up. I was like, Oh, sick. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. I've gotten that a couple of times, but I, for Danny, I think that's just different. Like his story is even more insane. Cause I know of Danny and like, Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that his, his brand and his story is like just completely out of this world. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm bowing down. Like, <laughs> like yes. <laughs> that's 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 crazy that like well that's cool danny uh, shout out to danny obviously has shout uh has earned so much respect in the community online and all that He's sort of stuff legend. he is yeah <laughs> the legend so the legend of uh of Danny is here and he's gifting out uh, some tier one subs say, to a lot of people in the chat he's that's going crazy yeah crazy right now that's awesome um and then we got a few other people uh that are here i mentioned i i just sent you the link to the discord channel the learn build teach discord channel which Hopefully you're interested in joining. And that has been uh, kind of a cool thing on my end of uh, just trying to connect to the people that I've gotten to work with and people that are interested in in learning, people that are interested in like sharing and, and teaching and working with other people. So that's what that whole Discord is about. And there's actually like mm -hmm. several people here in the Discord channel. Um, that's really nice. And that now like we're talking about another connection, like you've heard of Danny, now you get to like informally chat a little bit and that kind of stuff through chat. So that's kind of cool too. <laughs> I can't believe Justin knows who I am. Come on now, Danny. <laughs> Come on. So I want to like, uh, I want to get into this idea of, for lack of a better word, like fame celebrity. Like it, it's a real thing. Like it, like it makes, maybe makes you feel uncomfortable to think about that, but it kind of like, that is a thing. And that's the way a lot of people look at it. But before we do that, um, I'm kind of interested, like on the IT side, like what kind of stuff did you do? Like, what were your responsibilities working in like IT? Um, so the, my main tasks were like for the majority of the time, it was a lot of hardware and networking, um, with the, with the company that I was with or the client that I was stationed with primarily, um, it was dealing with a lot of hardware, uh, a lot of, um, you know, Ram switches, battery stuff, people spilling stuff mm, into yeah. the laptops, all that kind of stuff. So replacing hardware parts, um, in terms of the software, it's, you know, provisioning out new laptops for new hires that whatever we had, um, always seeing these, new, they were hardware engineers. So I kind of got a different taste of engineers. Okay. Uh, up front. <laughs> um, but you know, it was provisioning them, getting their software set up, um, setting up desks for them. And as far as like actual, the nitty gritty, you know, it was a lot of networking. Uh, I had to handle an onsite server room that we had. So it was yeah, taking care of, um, some of the Linux servers that we had both like on an admin side and a hardware side. So disk failures I had to take care of. And okay. we had a remote team that also assisted with that. Um, and you know, just a lot of, just a lot of grunt work. I feel like aside from the networking side, like that was just a whole different beast, like dealing with map drives uh, that were remote all the time and having to deal with, um, all that stuff was just like an, it, it brings PTSD back to me. It's just, cause so, well, yeah, well, this, yeah, we can, we can move past that. The reason I asked though is like one, like those are experiences that I don't have. So I feel like that's going to be like a, at least good experience and background for you uh, going forward. And I want to respond to something in the chat. Uh, our pan is asking is child's video stuttering for everyone. Yes, unfortunately. And if someone knows a better way to do this, when I stream and I pull someone in through zoom, occasionally they freeze for like a second or two and then it uh goes back to normal uh, i haven't it figured out doesn't help go ahead I'm on wi-fi uh I well should've... it's happened it's happened with all like all of them it's something about like the way i'm pulling it in ob or stream oh, labs i think am, yeah am i am i glitchy for you too uh occasionally but what's okay. weird is it only happens when i'm actually going to stream labs like if uh, i if we were to just have a regular zoom chat 
like uh -huh. video chat like this, it wouldn't happen. But since I'm going to Streamlabs, yeah, I just haven't figured it out. So I think it's probably just like a multitude of like both the bandwidth from Streamlabs going out and then like all the bandwidth well, yeah. to go out with too with Zoom. So that's true. Yeah, and networks might just be getting like overwhelmed bottleneck somewhere so back back to your networking experience yeah <laughs> so yeah. like when you were doing that did you realize was that just something you realized you didn't really enjoy and then i'm leading into like why programming and how did you like decide that was something you wanted to do um so you know i back to like being out of like college like i'm still very young like i'm only 23 years old right like technically i should not have beat just by a by a standard and an average of my age like you we're still generally in the phase of figuring things out yeah and you know when i was 20 19 to 20 um that's when i kind of went into the it route so i was just like you know i've been fixing computers all my life like literally since i was like six years old i've been fixing oh, the sweet. family computer doing all that yeah. stuff so that was just like an easy route for me to pick because it was like all you know everything in terms of IT kind of comes easy to me. Like I can look at something and then look something up and just understand it, you know? So I was just like, okay, I'll go with this route. Um, coding, I was doing on and off at a young age too. Like when I was in uh, the sixth or seventh grade, I was introduced to PHP and then like cool. on and off, I would do some coding in, here and there. But um, yeah, I guess, you know, working at the store didn't help because you're doing retail and IT stuff at the same time. So the retail part kind of burnt me out. And then going into um, the consulting side, you know, you go you're through a honeymoon phase, right? I'm going from a store over to actual IT work for enterprise level stuff. And it was great for like the first maybe four months. After that, I realized like, especially being at a help desk level, like regardless of whether you're level one or level two, um, it's you're kind of doing a lot of grunt work and it doesn't it's i felt almost disrespected being in help desk if that makes sense um you're kind of just like the guy that mm -hmm. everyone looks to um and no one really respects the time that you have or um they just kind of expect way too much expect, from yeah and just expect you to do whatever it is that they right need. like yeah. you're you're like and it didn't help that the office that I was at, I was the only IT person there. Um, granted, we have offices literally worldwide, so our IT team is spread. Okay. Um, but I'm the only guy on site, so you know all the work ends up on me. So backlogs were just like crazy, right? Um, and I think that just kind of contributed to the point where I was just like, I don't know if IT is for me. <laughs> like this is great and all, like maybe I'll stick to the family IT stuff, but like doing enterprise like doesn't really genuinely make me happy and I don't feel like I'm contributing yeah. to anything. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I that just kind of led me into the coding phase. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I uh, recently gave a talk and I want to get more into like career skills, either talks or videos or streams or whatever. And I recently gave one where like the ending, it was basically about like taking control of your career. And the ending was like, you need to be paying attention to the way you feel. If you go to work and you're a little less excited about it than you used to be, if you're like leaving work and you're more excited about going home than you used to be. And if you're there at work and you're like distracted and you're thinking about other stuff, you need to like pay attention to those feelings and then figure out like, all right, what might be the next step? And then what are the little baby steps that I can take to at least point myself in that direction? Cause I posted on Twitter uh, like a month or two ago in preparation for that talk. And I said like, if you're not happy with something in your life, if you're not doing something about it, it's basically your fault, right? That was kind of my message. And someone said like, that's cool and all, but you can't just like, I can't just go get a new job tomorrow. And I wanted to respond to address like, yeah, absolutely right. I totally agree with you, but you can do like really tiny things to work towards whatever that next thing is. It may take six months. It may take a week. It may take a year or multiple years, but at least you're working towards it instead of just kind of accepting that you're just in whatever position you find yourself in. No, hundred percent. And I think that's exactly what I had to go through. Oh. Um, you know, it was my full time job and I was making for my age, like I was happy with the money that I was making. Right. Like great. Like the money's coming in, but I'm not happy. And it's what you said. It's being self-aware enough to know that this just isn't it for you. Yep. And you need to be doing things to kind of get you to a spot where you're now happy and um, okay with doing what you want to do. Um, and it's also being smart enough 
to know that you can't just jump ship and you know cut everything like without a plan yeah like I, <laughs> I it's i i can like sympathize with that too because that's i almost got to that point where i was just like close to the end of 2019 i was like i'm done like yeah. i don't want to do this anymore <laughs> like this is stupid i don't want to be doing it like people it's getting closer to the holiday so i feel like people just got more antsy and wanted things just done 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 like there's a I was just building up yeah fill. Yeah. And I was just mentally, I was not in a place to like handle all that again, being like the solo, uh, the solo person there. Like it was just hard. Um, but so it was just, yeah, like I had to take small steps. So it was on my lunch breaks on off hours when I wasn't at, at my job and on weekends, you know, it's coding, coding, coding. Like I need to self-study and I need to make these small steps and progress to where I really want to be. And it's becoming a developer. So that's a hundred percent. You need to have a game plan and you need to, you know, be patient. I think is also the other thing aside from being self-aware is understanding where you're at right now and, you know, being patient enough to know that in the long term, the small steps you do every single day, whether it's only an hour of coding, 30 minutes of coding, like whatever, like it's going to get you to where you really need to be and want to be. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you'll, you'll find several people in the chat that have a lot of agreement with you of like it, it like you have to put in the time and you have to kind of, you have to grind for it. But also um, the idea of like not being able to just jump ship, like people are in all different kinds of positions. Like some people already have families. Some people already have a mortgage. Some people have bills that they have to pay. And so like, there is this idea of like going to a full-time boot camp, which could be really nice, right? Like those are really great resources not everybody can just not work and not everybody can like work a night job to make enough money to continue to get by. So that's why you see like, there's tons of different options. The boot camp that I taught in Memphis uh, was actually really unique because it was two nights a week. It was Monday and Wednesday night for three hours from six to nine. And I, most of the people had full-time jobs, right? And a lot of them had family. So they were able to continue to do that sort of stuff um, and then learn along the way. Um, shout out to uh, Faraday Academy, another um, Gwen who is in our uh, programming YouTubers channel, just also did a stream with Danny Thompson the other day, which is pretty sweet. Oh, nice. Um, so thanks for coming and hanging out, uh, Faraday Academy. Um, all right. So I want to like going through this progression of like you realize you, you weren't really fully into what you're doing and then you start kind of dedicating yourself like, all right, I want to go the route of doing um, software development of some sort, or at least like learning towards that. Where did, where did the social media part come in? Uh, like what was, what was your inspiration for that? And then how did that continue to grow and kind of build on itself? Yeah. So you know, being, being an active social media goer, like before this, I would always be on Instagram, like on downtime in the middle of breaks and things like that. And I'm a very like, obsessive person when it comes to setups and like the r slash battle station like subreddit on reddit so okay. i'm always looking at setup stuff and this is going to like segue into it so on instagram on my personal account i would always follow um people who had nice setups and, okay like they would come in here and there and like guess the algorithm like really catered like my explore page to that and i saw a lot of developers who had really nice setups I see, I see a lot of and, that on mine too. So I feel you there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, I would see all these people who just so happen to be developers and they had nice setups. So I would follow them and there would be a couple people where I was just like, Oh, I love what they're doing. I would literally, there were a couple, like a handful of people. I would scroll all the way down yeah. to the, their beginning and just kind of look at like their progression and watch what they did and watched um, what the whole point was behind their page. And I would see that they're just documenting their journey. They're literally learning these things while posting these sick pictures. And I'm like, yo, this, this seems like something I could do. I, 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 I love what they're doing. I kind of want to do it. So let me just, let me try to like delve into that really quick. Like I need to, I need to break out and kind of do something. Cause I felt stagnant in it again. Like I just didn't know what to do with it. And I knew I wanted to get into software development. So I was just like, okay. Let me just uh, let me just start my own like own account. Just get away from the personal side and start to create a brand a little bit. So started taking pictures in September. Again, very awful, but I mean, I was trying <laughs> to emulate some of the people that I was like following. Yep. And that just kind of built up onto itself uh, as far as like why and 
what started me in uh, the whole Instagram space and, you know, just doing it consistently and listening to Gary V too. Like he has a lot of videos on um, like marketing yourself, building personal brands and some of the strategies behind building it. So that's, that kind of like propelled me into the space for sure. Sweet. I haven't, I haven't actually read or seen or listened to much of his content, but people talk about him all the time. And maybe that's something I should do a little bit more of. I think he's very, he's just a very practical human being. Okay. Like some of the stuff he says are simple, but it's like the way he presents them makes it click in a way. And I think that's what it did for me. So okay. I yeah. think I would highly recommend it. Cool. Um, a couple of, want to address a couple of comments in here. Kapehe, who was, used to be my coworker before she like upgraded to get into DevRel at Sanity IO. Congrats to Kapehe. Nice. Um, she went through a boot camp. Um, she did, uh, or she's, yeah, she's saying she did a boot camp, but online content is so phenomenal. Partially a shout out to her because she did online content for, uh, for us hero. And, uh, so if a boot camp doesn't work, self-taught is so attainable. It's absolutely true. The thing, like I always want to bring up just being a realist is I think it is really important for people to know from my perspective, not having a boot camp and especially not having a college degree makes it more difficult. And the only reason is that so many places still look for that by default. Like that's the only reason. And my personal perspective is I think we talked about this before. Like I went through college and I graduated college with much less practical knowledge than you have right now, or you had uh, several months ago and people much less than people had coming out of boot camps. So jobs just haven't, a lot of jobs haven't started to realize the power of, and like the, uh, the user base, I don't know what the, like what the word is, but like the people out there that are so talented, so smart and super excited about it to hire them in, it's getting a lot more and more, and it's probably better than most industries, but it does make it more difficult, which unfortunately sucks. But there's so many amazing resources out there. Like I am really in tune with the idea of being self-taught because everything I know about, um, about web development is completely self-taught from YouTube and Udemy. Like I didn't get any more formal training than that. And I just spent a shit ton of hours watching videos and spent a shit ton of hours just like trying to build stuff myself. So. Yeah, no. And it, it sucks too, because like, again, for me, it, it's, it's super hard just being fully self-taught in terms of web development yep. to find a company that is willing to kind of just branch out from the, traditional uh, thing they're used to traditional structure that yep. is so in place at so many different companies yep um regardless of startup you know enterprise whatever it is right like that they're so set in their ways and there's too many layers i feel like to the whole interviewing process and things like that as well um that a lot of people can disagree with including myself <laughs> but i mean there's just a lot of gatekeeping unfortunately like the yeah that's and that's a huge topic on twitter and yep. in general right like the whole gatekeeping scene for web development jobs and things like that like it doesn't help the self-taught people who like you said we come out from self from being self-taught with so much more practical knowledge and like no matter the amount of projects you have no matter the amount of stuff that you put out there in public it, it isn't enough to go past whoever is screening i feel which is unfortunate Dep depending on where you are absolutely yeah um yeah. like i said a lot of people a lot of places a lot of companies have gotten better i was very outspoken at fedex to say that like we need to be looking at these people and we ended up hiring two or three or four maybe five <laughs> i can't remember three or four at least <laughs> people out of like the boot camp that i taught and i was so thrilled to see those people get their first opportunity coming from the quote-unquote non-traditional background at such a like an old school enterprise company like FedEx. Uh, we got a comment in here from code stacker. It's a matter of educating recruiters and companies. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. They just, they, they don't know when they haven't made the leap and all it takes is like one or two successful hires, right. For them to realize like, this is a viable option. We need to be like paying more attention to this. Um, I didn't realize code stacker, um, follow code stacker on YouTube. If you haven't already, uh, saying he didn't have a degree. I didn't know that. And it was a hurdle for him. Uh, but once he could prove that he knew what he was doing, there's no more issues. And that's what, that's, what's really interesting because like, after you get your first job, then like, it's up, like, it doesn't really matter after that. Right. Like you, yeah, you've proven it. Open. Yeah. Then you're just, you're open to stuff going forward. 
Um, That's back- the thing that kind of like makes me mad. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, go ahead. Like, it, it, it's it's like you just need that one yes. Like it sounds very simple. Like you just need the one yes. But once you do, then it's just what was the difference? You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> what what changed i got one job up and then it's just like you're now this shining star in front of everybody just like come on man like i had this the whole time you were just sleeping on me yeah i mean that's you're basically you're basically outsourcing your vetting right like you're letting another company vet that person yes and then because i i feel like i was I feel like in, in a lot of ways with my knowledge, I didn't deserve it, but I was super fortunate to start off at Microsoft, like a really huge tech company. Everybody knows Ooh. Microsoft. Like that was so yeah. huge for me. And I feel like after that, it was that much easier for me because people will look at like, all right, well, if Microsoft hired you, there must've been something there. So it's just, yeah, exactly. like people, like whoever takes the risk is taking a quote unquote risk, taking that initial risk. After that, they're saying, all right, you've already kind of proven uh proven that you could do it and there's there's less doubt so that's the that's the thing too is now that you have microsoft on your resume i feel like any of the side projects or whatever you did doesn't matter like if it says microsoft (laughs) they just see that and be like yo we need to get james like (laughs) the boy was at microsoft like he's the real deal like (laughs) scratch his github whatever like bring him in just just microsoft yeah exactly for, so fun fact for people that are out there, I also went through the full interview process at Google twice and got turned down, like in the office in New York City and everything and got turned down. So it's not a shoe in thing, uh, exactly. but it's it definitely, like yeah, it, de- it definitely helps you. Um, yeah. Backtracking a little bit, because this is this is great because I'm having trouble keeping up with the comments. That means there's great interaction in the chat, so which is awesome. Um, <laughs> Arpan is asking about burnout. And uh, how do you deal with it? And I'm going to turn this over to you to talk about it after um, uh, shouting out Danny's rule on burnout. If you feel tired, listen to your body. Um, He is a go, go, go kind of person. Um, He would rather pull back and rest than to burn out and recover. Recovery can take many weeks instead of just resting a few days, which sorry, one more thing I had on my mind. Um, I think Sleepy Arpan later commented... I'm having trouble keeping up that like he wants to not, or maybe it was uh, NDX dev. I can't remember. Sorry. Um, commented that like when he gets burned out, it's like, I don't want to touch a computer for like multiple weeks. That's probably like a sign that you want to backtrack and like be a little bit more self-preservational before you get to yeah. the point. Anyway. So you on your YouTube channel, one of your most recent videos is dealing with burnout and you talk about that, which I think is great. Cause it's in one of those like personal styles where you get to like, just listen to somebody's story. Um, anyway, any thoughts for you, like in your personal life and the stuff that you do on, on burnout and how you deal with it? Yeah. So I think it's, so just to like preface it, like I feel, uh, on social media, especially just because, you know, we're all on it. Um, you can see my Instagram, plenty of other people's Instagrams, people on Twitter. We have this like hustle grind, got to go, go, go. Like Danny said, mentality. Um, so it's easy. It's so easy to get carried away with the whole, like, I got to grind. Like (laughs) I can't, I got to work 18 hour days. I got to work weekends. Like can't hang out with my friends. Can't do anything else except for whatever it is you're doing. In this case, it's coding, right? So it's easy to get carried away in this whole mental. And especially if you look up to people who are, who have already made it, you don't realize that they're taking care of themselves already. Like you don't realize that yes, they're working hard, but they're also being smart about it. And I think that's the thing is being very smart with the amount of work that you put in. And it circles back to the whole self-awareness thing. Like you need to understand when you're putting in way too much work that you're stressing yourself out and you're approaching a point to where you're, you're going to fall out of love with whatever it is you're doing. You know, and I think that's the huge thing is people just drive themselves to quote unquote insanity with coding and then they fall out of love with it and then they just stop. So, I mean, the way that I really dealt, dealt with and am dealing with burnout just just because it happened so recently with me um, is that I've like pulled back a lot in terms of how much I do a day. Um, I don't try to code all day day anymore (laughs) i don't try to be an early riser and then a night owl at the same time yeah um taking more priority with my personal health and mental health yeah like physically and mentally right so it's going to sleep actually getting sleep like i feel like too many people 
try to compete with how less sleep they get. Like, who I slept four hours. Like, yeah, that's not me. Come on, brother. Like, I <laughs> um, yeah, I'm I like, like I'm a, like eight hours a, a night myself. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing though is you also have to be self aware that I can't sleep eight hours, or right. else I'll just be groggy the rest of the day. Yeah, like I can't do that. It's yeah, it's um, based on what works for you. Exactly. Exactly. So, and that's the thing is you have to know what works for you. If you yep. can work these 18 hour days, blah, 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 without burning out. Great. Um, although I don't recommend it either way. Right. So it's, it's making yourself a priority and understanding that's not selfish of you to do. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, you know, taking care of the sleep, getting away from the computer every once in a while is fine. You know, playing video games. If you just need to mentally escape, do like find another hobby. That's not coding. I think that was a huge thing for me. Um, is finding other hobbies. So for me, it's working out. For me, it's making videos. For me, it's taking photos, things like that. As long as you're doing something that doesn't relate to work, you just come back even more hungry and you're less burnt. So absolutely, yeah. I so like feeling well. One like funny comment I caught from Arpan was this is quality advice. I never realized the people I look up to actually rest. Uh, yes, there's a <laughs> lot of rest involved. Uh, like I said, I get my eight hours a night, and like often I'm asleep by nine o'clock, but then I end up waking up early. Right. So that's just kind of my schedule. But for me, like some of the feelings I have, I, I don't necessarily feel like I have to be doing stuff all the time. What I feel like is that if I'm not, I'm missing out on an opportunity to do stuff. Is that like, it's a slight yeah. difference, I think for me. Um, but I'm just like, I'm out somewhere. And anytime I have like a second of dead time, I'm like, Oh, I could, I could be reading an article right now, or I could be watching a YouTube video, or I could be on Twitter, like responding to stuff. And so that's hard. One of the things that I personally focus on is I make sure that I go out of my way to do family things, whatever that is. And I've got my sister, my brother-in-law, my three nephews live um, two, like not even, like less than a mile away. So we're in the same neighborhood. We're super close. We don't get to do as much because of COVID, but we still like hang out a decent amount and that kind of stuff. So I'll make sure to do those kind of things. Um, it's worked out for me lately. So my latest video actually that my wife has been going to work earlier. So like I've got like two hours of time that I can use to create content and stuff before I even start my job. So that's one of the things that's worked out well for me. And then, like you said, having hobbies outside of coding and even like, like content creation is close to that, right? Like for me, a lot of my screencast stuff, it's coding, right? So I still need something outside of that. There's no better feeling for me than going for a run. Then going out, we talked about, we bonded over basketball the other day. Like I've got a, a goal in my driveway and that's my number one break. Like I'll, I'll go, I'll take the dog and let her just sit out there with me and I'll play basketball and just like shoot around for like 30 minutes or whatever. And there's no better feeling than like breaking it up and going and doing that stuff for myself. Uh, but at the end, like you just, yeah, you have to pay attention. You have to be intentional. I think about taking breaks and doing things to just kind of shake, shake up what's going on. Yeah. And like one thing I like to do is kind of, make metaphors or analogies to cut some of these things. So I, I think of coding and like you said, we bond over basketball, right? So I think of those kinds of athletes, like high, high tier athletes that are like in the NBA or in the NFL. Like if you watch like any documentary or kind of like video that goes into their life, watch how much priority they put into the recovery. Mm -hmm. Like, like take, take note of how much recovery they actually put in so that they can perform at a high level. And that's what I think of with, with software development or coding in general, right? It's you need to take care of you so that you can still perform at a high level. They are not playing basketball or, you know, doing these things. Um, they're not practicing and shooting or doing whatever all day, every day. Like there no. is still a priority on recovery. Even if there are stories like, like Kobe, like rest in peace, but like Kobe was, obviously on the outside very obsessed with basketball but he still took a good amount of time to spend on recovery yep yeah like him as a player like his body needs to perform well so absolutely yeah you have to take care of it and a lot of that i think for us is the mental aspect like we have to take exactly. care of our mental aspect so that we can do other mm -hmm. stuff there's some i don't know what the number is but lebron james spends a million or two to million dollars a year on like Easy. chefs and training and like all that kind of stuff right so he like he probably takes care of himself better than anyone else out there, or at least yep. spends a ton of money on it. A um, couple of interesting comments. Uh, Scrabill. Um, I don't, I don't know. I hate like pronouncing usernames that I don't know how to pronounce, <laughs> but anyway, um, Scrabill uh, says stuck on a, a code problem once couldn't figure it out. Didn't touch it for three weeks. 
moment I, uh, you came back, found what was wrong. I think like, I can't tell you how many times like I've gone to sleep and like dreamt about something. And the next day I'm like, oh, that was easy. Like just taking a break <laughs> and like stepping away and coming back to it is, um, is definitely a great suggestion. Like just get, get out, go for a walk, go watch a movie, um, anything to just kind of like break it up a little bit. Um, and by the way, this is like the best this is a very good problem to have, but I apologize if I'm missing chats because they're moving by pretty quick for me. Um, so if you see any that you want to comment on too, go ahead and shout that out as well. No, for sure. Uh, well, the one thing that I see is, uh, I'm going to the same thing is how to pronounce C Oreo. Yeah. C Oreo, um, is they are saying that not that productivity is my ultimate life goal. And I, I, I almost want to like low key disagree with that because it kind of should be, um, like you should want to be productive in like every aspect of your life. I almost feel like, I don't know like what your take on that is, but I mean, Oh, well they just came back with saying, but someone once said to me, rest is productive. So that's an intentional like, thing. Yeah. Like if, yeah, like I, I, <laughs> I've been a nap person in the afternoon for years. Like in middle school, I would come home from school. I would take a nap. I would, sorry, I'd go to baseball practice or basketball practice. I'd come home. I'd take a nap and I wake up and I'd eat dinner and I'd do my homework. And that just worked for me. And I did that like only recently, like real recently have I not been taking naps consistently in the afternoon. Um, and so when I was like working at FedEx, going to work every day, like at two o'clock in the afternoon or three, I just, I couldn't, I was useless. Right. Like, but had it been acceptable for me to just like pop off or like step away for a minute and take a 15 minute nap in my car or like at my desk or whatever and not get judged. Like I could have come back 20 minutes later and been a totally different person. Yeah. So like those, those are the types of things that like you can be super aware of like how it works for you and then do those things. And that's, what's so great about like, I, for me culturally, like working at a modern startup company where I could take a nap and nobody gives a shit cause I get my job done. Right. Like it's different mm -hmm. than being like in a big enterprise where that's not the culture. But now I think like people agree, like you need to be at your best and whatever it is for you to do that, you can take care of that yourself. And then, um, it, you'll be that much better later on. So a hundred percent. And like the thing that, um, sleepy Arpan was, is saying, mm -hmm. like, I guess I feel like shit when I am not coding and that feeling, s that feeling sucks. Interesting. Wait, what? And that feeling sucks. Feels like I can't even enjoy my rest. Like it's, yeah. That the other thing is being okay with not doing something that you feel like yeah. you should be doing. And I um, think, I think that's our yeah. job, right? Like that's why we're having this conversation. And that's why he commented earlier to say like, Oh my God, the people I look up to rest like, yes. Like I'm very intentional about like, I make sure yeah. I get sleep. If I like last night I was up till 11, which is late for me. And I intentionally like laid in bed longer cause I wasn't going to get up cause I just wasn't ready. Right? Like you mm -hmm. do those things and don't feel bad about it. Cause we're all, either we all are doing it or we should be doing it to make sure that like we are our best. Exactly. And it just circles back to the whole athlete analogy, right? It's yes. It probably sucks that you're not playing all the time that you're not, you know, on the field or on the court all the time and like doing the things that you love to do. But you also have to understand that you are, you can only be able to perform at your best if you are taking the time to like, recover and focus on yourself because otherwise you're just going to get hurt. Right. And I think that's the same thing with coding. If you don't take the time to really recover and step away and just mm -hmm. focus on yourself mentally, you're not going to perform as well as you're going to want to. And although you think that, I think this is, this is like the one like separation, right? It's, it doesn't matter how many reps you put in. There's a, there's a point where there's too many reps. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you could be coding all the time and feeling like you're productive, but is it really productive work? Yeah. Like you need, like it needs to be a productive session, not a long session. Right. Exactly. And that's, that's my thing about like taking a nap. Like I could work less amount of time and be way more productive in my job. Um, we've got uh, web dev simplified, uh, from YouTube. Kyle Yo. is here in the chat and, uh, Danny and maybe a few other people are fangirling. So, uh, shout out to web dev simplified, <laughs> shout out to Kyle. Uh, thanks for coming to hang out. And, uh, yeah, you've got some, you got some fans in the chat, which is pretty cool. Dude, um, web dev simplified. I've, I've watched so much of his stuff yeah. coming up. Like I've learned so much already from him. So it's, it's been, crazy to know that he's in the chat now. Yeah. It's been like, Honestly, I have a little bit of that same feeling because I 
there's so many people in that discord server that we're in that I, I knew of right from just watching their videos. Right. And, and then to actually be like able to ask them questions and hear things that yeah. they are, are doing on their channels and like experimenting with. So, um, anyway, yeah, cool to have so many people here. This is a great audience. Um, Danny yeah, is, awesome. is saying, do not confuse movement with productivity. Um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's the thing of like you working doesn't necessarily mean that you're productive. Like you want to make sure yeah. that the time that you actually spend, you are uh, using it wisely, but overall, like you don't need to go 24 seven. You need to take breaks. You need to enjoy other things. Um, and hopefully like, I think one of the things for me is I found my way of learning and participating that I enjoyed most. And a lot of that was like, I stopped watching for a while, like Netflix a night. And I would just watch um, like Udemy or YouTube videos. And I didn't have to be super attentive because I wasn't following along. Um, like by writing code, I was just kind of listening and that didn't mm -hmm. teach me a whole lot. It really just opened my mind up to like, all right, next time I need to do X, I at least have an idea of where to go or like that this thing is possible. Right. So that's kind of how I like approach kind of subtle learning. And then podcasts were another one where like you could be pretty passively, um, passively paying attention and still kind of soak in a little bit of the kind of the keywords and stuff that you hear. Yeah. And the nice thing about podcasts is it's, it's hard to do thing like, like the topics that you would typically talk, talk about on a podcast, aren't things that you need to actively listen to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like a tutorial where your mind if you needs miss, to be you're fully screwed. engaged. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's just like, it's nice chatter to have on, but it, there's also value h hidden in podcasts as well. So Absolutely. I think that's the nice thing about them that you can just passively listen to um, yep. and still get things uh, away from them. Yep. So speaking of podcasts, I haven't, we haven't done any specific shout outs, but, um, chow codes, chow underscore codes. Is that right? On uh, the podcast isn't, it, there's no underscore. I was, That's yeah. the confusing part. Okay. So I was starting, go, all right, going back to Instagram, uh, chow <laughs> underscore codes, go find, uh, go find that one. And then the podcast is the chow codes podcast. And you had a really amazing guest on for the last episode which is me if people didn't catch that, like <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the like shameless plug there. Uh, what got you into what, why, why a podcast? What got you into that? And, and then how's it going? Like, what's that process like? So, um, Chris Sean, if for those of you who do know him, um, he's the reason why I have a podcast. So he started his own, the developer branded podcast. He had me on as the first guest, um, oh, kind of out the blue. And like, he was also another person who I knew of and like looked up to because of his whole, pr uh, process he documented on YouTube. And then he reached out to me and he was just like, Hey, do you want to be the first guest? I was like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, please. And then, so we had, we chatted through that podcast episode and it was awesome. And then at the end of it, he was just like, Hey, you gotta make your own. Like you're good at talking. You're good at, mm -hmm. you know, just conversating with people so i think you need to start your own i was like okay uh okay yeah <laughs> I, I i guess so and you know the rest is history right like i'm only 11 episodes in but um it's awesome honestly like the podcast not meant for monetizing right like obviously i run ads on it but it's not that sole purpose it's i love giving back to people and helping people regardless no. of where i'm at in my journey so far as a developer like i don't care how junior i am like all of us have value to give in Absolutely. some form. And I felt like through my Instagram platform, it was showing. So I was, okay, let me branch out and do this on a podcast where I can have spoken word and, you know, kind of elaborate on some of the topics that I talk about already. And that's kind of what this is, is, and it, it also helps talking to other people because then there's different perspectives in it now. Yep. Um, and you can kind of go on different topics that, touch with different people and then, you know, get their opinions. And that's what I want is I want my audience and, you know, the growing audience to now see, um, what value can come out of this and, you know, how many different people like can just elaborate more on whatever topics we have. So I, I think, you know, the podcast has just been growing so far, so much so far, and it's been an amazing process to add on to my whole different, list of things of things you, yeah um one comment so um I, i've got a lot like everything you say i'm like all right i got five things i need to try to remember to say to respond to that <laughs> um brad garropy um a good friend of mine who like we've only met virtually and 
um, anyway, he's been a lot of uh, streams and stuff, but it's all been virtual for us. But I feel like we've become pretty close online. Um, he commented earlier about reusing content. And I think this is the one of the things that I'm getting better at. And I think you'll see a lot of people do really good at um, is an example is like we did our podcast, uh, your podcast. I was on your podcast last week and uh, we recorded it and I was done and that was kind of it. I didn't realize behind the scenes you were like recording yourself, which I actually did a little bit. I turn it off now, but I got some minutes <laughs> like you recorded the whole thing with a different angle right behind you. Yeah. And then that clip became a clip in your most recent um, YouTube video. So like you're, you're just like, it, it only takes a second, right. To set up the camera, but then you've got this extra footage that you can tie into your thing. And for me, like I did uh, shout out to Chris on code. If you're still here uh, from scotch, like I was writing articles for scotch and then doing videos at the same time. So it's the same content just in a different form. And it's easier to do either one of them after I've already done one. Right. So kind of double dipping there. Um, and then uh, Brad Brad asked, uh, do you always have a guest on your podcast? Which uh, my answer is no, because I listen to yours on dealing with negativity. But is your plan to is your plan to mostly do guests or or mix it in with stuff with yourself? Or what are you thinking about that? Yeah, it's it's going to be a 50 50. OK, um, I typically like to have people on just because uh, I feel like I get more. Not I do. I feel like more people get more value out of it when there's two people. Sure. I just become a little bit more active when it comes to talking, when there's another person. Um, not to say that I'm not going to have episodes where it's just me. Yep. Um, but I, the, the main goal was to yes, bring people on and um, just kind of chat and, and have a good time, but also provide value. So I think the best episodes are obviously the ones that are with other people. Um, but as far as the, the goal, I think it's going to be a nice 50, 50 of me and other guests. Okay. So, so it's just hard when it comes to booking, but yes. That, that is, so logistically it's tough. Cause I like, um, I messaged you I, people out there don't know this, but I messaged you yesterday and I was like, Hey, tomorrow you want to come on and do the stream with me? And you're like, yeah, absolutely. And it's because like, I haven't been proactive in like scheduling out my Friday streams. I need to get back into it. Like I, at one point I was booked out like two months in advance, which was awesome. Um, now I, like after this one, I still don't have anything. So I need to start like booking yeah. them out again. Yeah. Um, looking at, um, some comments here, Danny Thompson, I know for my podcast only with other people, interesting guests. Yeah. I think, I think that's the cool thing about, um, about having people on, right. Is like you said, like learning from them, talking about experiences, that kind of stuff. Um, let me, let me try something out here. I'm not, I'm, this may not happen, but if you're interested on being on the Chow Codes podcast, leave a comment in the chat and just express your interest. And then I'll let you handle those responses however you see fit. For sure. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, I honestly, like anybody, <laughs> as long as you're a dev, like I, I want to talk to you and like figure out your journey because that's the cool thing, right? Is like the more people yep. that come on. And I, I think I told you this on the podcast was mm -hmm. everyone's journey is different. Like no one is going to be the same. Like, and it makes it even better when they come from different um, backgrounds, yep, right? Exactly. And everyone does. Like, there's different variables in your life, whether it comes with family, financial issues. It just makes it even even better, right? So, to see how certain people navigate through their own, uh, I don't want to say problems, but um, through their own the past, story, uh, experiences, right, everything, right? Yeah. Through their own life, right? To yep. get to the point to where they're at right now. I think that's what makes every episode um, unique in its own way. And it, it doesn't, that's not to say that I need someone who has a following on Instagram, a following on right. Twitter. Like I, like as long as you're a dev, you have a story yeah, and I want to talk to you about it. Right. I can't so. like, I can't shake my head. Like I can't agree anymore. <laughs> like that's one of the cool things. And that's one of the things that I would encourage people to not undersell is like, things out and this is kind of the point of this podcast like or not this isn't a podcast this stream is things <laughs> outside of writing code help you become a better developer and they help you get hired like it's like if if a company happens to need a developer and they also just don't really have anyone to like do some video random stuff right or some social media stuff 
Well, like you would be a really good value, right? Because you could do both because you like yeah. uniquely have that experience and it's all like so many different things. You also have the IT background and getting into hardware and networking. I don't have that. Like I wouldn't be able to provide that extra value for someone. And those are things that like you may not um, specifically look at for yourself. I also um, double majored with computer science and Spanish in college. And then I, part of the reason I got my job at Microsoft was they needed someone in South Florida and they thought it would be a good idea to hire someone that also spoke Spanish. Makes sense mm-hmm. because Spanish is so prevalent. Never thought that that would have an impact on my career. Um, when you were talking, I kind of chuckled and I cracked up, but uh, web dev Charlie, who's in the chat. What's up web dev Charlie uh, said, this is the most famous chat on a live stream I've been to, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm like dying at. Cause I f- like that, like fangirling thing. I'm like, Oh my God, all these people are here and they're like hanging out and chatting. This is really cool. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> no, I know a lot of people that I watch are like, look up on yeah. Twitter. I'm like, yo, y'all are here watching me. Like, I, I don't know what to do. Like, do I move my hands? Like, what do I do? Like, so a funny thing about hands in your, um, in your last video, uh, you mentioned like you showed the recording of us doing the pot or you doing the podcast with me. And you said like, in one of the comments, you fidget a lot. And like, I fidget <laughs> yeah. the whole time. I've got something in my hand, like the whole time I'm doing this. <laughs> and when you said that, I was like, Oh my gosh, I totally do that. Like the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Like the whole podcast. I mean, like if I had my camera like rolling the whole time, I'm just You'd like, be, yeah, fidgeting. Doing whatever with my hands. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm playing with the microphone cable. I'm like playing around with these things. And I'm like, oh my God, I got ADD up. I, I, yeah, I do it too. It's like whatever, whatever I've got on my desk, I will grab. Mm-hmm. Um, from uh, Siora, I'm scrolling back. Let me find the comment. I think the question was like any, how did you get started in the podcast? I think more like logistically than like motivation and any tips for people uh, that are looking to start a podcast or maybe interested in starting a podcast. <clears throat> um logistically speaking i mean it helped that i had people following me on instagram already yeah and i think i purposely waited to start my podcast so i had connections already yeah um because the podcast was always something on my mind that i wanted to do eventually just because you know you listen to all these podcasts you get inspired you're just like oh i kind of want to do that um so logistically speaking like it was easy I had a lot of people that I wanted to talk to, a lot of people that I could just, you know, reach out through a DM and be like, hey, I'm starting a podcast. Mm-hmm. Would you like to be on? And yep. it was just, boom. Okay, here's my Calendly link. Just, you know, book yep. a time and we'll get started from there. Um, so logistically speaking, it was easy for me. Now, that's kind of the reason why we talked about before was having a personal brand to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, to create that whole networking space. Now, in terms of like how to get started, it's really like so easy. Um, it couldn't be any easier, right? Like all you have to do is make an account on a hosting platform and there's so many out there free or paid. Um, Which, I use anchor for mine. I was, that's what I was going to ask. Cause they are also a sponsor of the podcast too, right? Uh, yes. Well, by default they come as a sponsor, but yes. Yeah. Um, Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, so I started on anchor just because it's free. They do the distribution for you. Like mm. they put you on Spotify, Apple podcasts, sweet pocket cast all that for you so all the the manual work is done um and i love anchor like just for that reason right yep Um, danny danny is doubling down he said he loves anchor also there you go even more reason but literally all you have to do is make an account on there and you can just get started like they have in-house tools for you to record if you don't have one and all again this is the way you have to think about a podcast all it is is talking yeah. And that's, that's the one, like I've talked to my wife about this recently. Like I, uh, I do so many of these kind of conversations and I love them and I could see myself doing a podcast and really enjoying it. I think like for me, I'm a little nervous cause there's a lot of them. Right. So it's like hard to find your niche, but also I, I don't need to be taking on like one more thing to have responsibility for Like that's my thing is I need to like slow down and focus more on the stuff yeah. that I'm doing. Uh, yeah. But like you said, like you just like you have a conversation with somebody And then for me, like, I just love listening to it. I don't have to be like super in tune. I can catch bits and pieces here and there, but just to hear more and learn about other people's experiences and like their path is super interesting. Yeah. And that's the cool thing too, is like, I agree with you. I, I I feel like I need to slow down too, because I've just been moving in so many different directions that we're circling back to the whole burnout, like thing that it's just been burning me out, have not having to, but like just just me as a person like i just want to work all the time so i'm like tacking on work doing all these different things but the nice thing about the podcast is it's probably the least stressful part 
um, when it comes to actually producing it, just because I find it more um, appealing just because, you know, we're just having a conversation. You're talking to someone who has, who's like-minded, who has the same interests, same hobbies, potentially, right? And then you'll strike up on a topic where for me and you, it was basketball and all these things. And then now yep. you get to know that person a lot more. Yep. So to me, it's not work. To me, it's a nice escape from coding because we now actually just get to talk about it or talk about like the nitty gritty stuff that comes with it, um, which I find more one valuable and two entertaining. So the podcast is just a nice like get away, talk to other people, network a little bit, just connect and just have a good time in general. So yeah. It's if you look at it that way and not like work, work, right. then I could feel it, you know, being something that you actually genuinely enjoy. Right. And that, and I think like for me, I, I would absolutely be super excited to just have those conversations because I, I do it a lot. Like people send me a question on Twitter or email or something and I'm like, hey, you want to just like chat about it? You want to do a Zoom and like just talk? Um, it's just easier for me to do that. And I enjoy it so much. So yeah, maybe one day, but, but I, I just, I feel like I, I mean, shouldn't do another. Technically you're, these are, these are like a podcast. The, this one in particular is, and, and I could do more of these, but then I would have to, I would feel like I should do it on a regular basis, but like a lot of these have been programming. So like, this is one of the few times that I've not shown a desktop at all. Like usually there would be like code involved. So Gotcha. Um, Brad Garpy is uh, heading out. Thanks for hanging out, Brad. I think he had a question about what the host is. I assume Anchor is the host, also. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then um, totally uh, changing topics. Uh, Exabyte asked, "How long do you spend customizing your editor?" Um, so I use VS Code. I've got an entire course on VS Code that you can go and check out. I'll like plug myself there. I've got lots of videos on YouTube about VS Code as well. Um, Chris on Code says 9,000 hours. Yeah, I think mine was like 9,005. So a long time. Uh, but I, I personally have spent a lot of time just figuring out the ins and outs of VS Code. Um, one, to do that course, but then also, yeah, to, to customize it for myself. I don't think I've spent that amount of time on VS Code. <laughs> you, have, you haven't spent 9,000 hours doing it? <laughs> no, I, I mean, now I think I need to. Like... <laughs> I feel like I'm missing out now. Um, I, I haven't changed much settings aside from the color theme in my font. Yeah. Well, it's funny because uh, uh, Web Dev Simplified uh, just said uh, he thinks he's the only person that uses nearly all defaults. Uh, Kapehe <laughs> says, Kapehe says same. So you, you've, got, you've got company here. Okay. Well, we got a small <laughs> team. We got a small team. We, we probably all make up maybe 15 hours total of messing <laughs> with VS Code. So. We got some work to do to get the 9,000 hours. But you got a long, long way to go to get to 9,000, yeah. Yeah, I might have to jump on that course because uh, so if, I can omit some of the 9,000. There you go. If you're interested in it, yeah, let me know. Um, I got you. What else do we have? Uh, Walker, who is Vanilla G, another uh, graduate from the boot camp here in Memphis, one of the awesome members of the community here, asked, does your company, I'm assuming you're talking to me, Walker, um, have any security related podcasts or talk about new methods in security? We, I don't know if it's a, we've talked about it. We don't, I don't have any details though. So no, we don't have one yet. There has been talks. Uh, like if you, if I'm not supposed to tell you that you didn't hear it from me, I don't really know. Um, so maybe one day, but there's not one right now. Um, but that is one of the things that I, I think would make sense for us to do. Um, Scrabill says use Adam. Oh, you've got to switch over to VS Code. Oh this is, boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is the one time I'm gonna be that person. At least give it a give it a try and then uh come back and let me know how it went. And especially if there's things that you prefer in Adam, uh I'd love to hear. It'd be really cool to hear. Um Kapehe said line height and font was recently changed. Other than that, so many <laughs> default settings. <laughs> I didn't even know you could change line height. You're actually blowing my mind. I what? didn't eat. I feel like, um, uh, Chris, Chris on code commented about that being one of the things that he changed in his as well. Recently. I can't remember there. She just, yeah. Chris on code taught me this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, oh, man. and then Kyle web dev simplified says, I always laugh when someone asks me what my theme is. He's like theme question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Line oh, height man. over two for the win. I'll have to try that out. I haven't, um, does it make me code faster? Cause if it is, I'm gonna do it. Actually, 
absolutely. Uh, <laughs> line oh, three if you want to be the best. I'm doing line it right high now. thirty five. Three if you want to be the uh, best. Interesting. Chris on code is throwing out the secrets right now. This is what you tease for a podcast. If Chris on code is saying these kind of things, you just be like, oh, Chris on code threw out some heat today. This yeah, this you is how you in. this is how you do the YouTube videos too. You say, yeah. all right, <laughs> at the end of the video, I'll give you the super secret. Uh, <laughs> Super secret secret tip from uh, Chris on Code, and it's oh like line height over three, and then like yeah. mic drop. <laughs> oh my, Chris, you're doing it. <laughs> Listen, that's a, that's a video that needs to be made. Tease just the hell out of people <laughs> at like for like a 14 minute video, and then the real value and is then in the just last two mic seconds. Drop. Just be like line uh line height line height three. And walk out of frame. <laughs> Boom. And, and yeah, done. Nice. Oh, that's so good. It's the tea. The teaser is it's between minute 10 and minute 70. <laughs> Somewhere in there. You don't know. So you just have to like watch it all. You're just going to have to watch it. Well, um, the best. Here, here's a fun, fun comment. Swallow says, love VS Code, but can't seem to shake off the Vim habits. Really? This is intense. Um, people, pe I like there are die car, die hards, not die cards, die hard um, VI Vim users. And in some ways, like you can be super, super productive with it, uh, but you have to spend a lot of time learning the ins and outs of VI to be able to like get to that level, which is not something I'm prepared oh. to do. Um, I, yeah, I had like, I think I took a, a small bit of a Swift course just to see what it was all about. Mm -hmm. And then we had to use Vim to set up our environment for a oh. second. And I was like, oh boy, what what is this? Yeah, not... Um, not fun. Our pan says adventures. What is? Oh, oh God! I'm clicking it. Do I click it? I'm I'm clicking it. I think that's that's what I'm doing. Oh, what is this? <laughs> is this? Oh, I bet no. it's like a. It's probably like a treasure hunt, and you can't get out until you learn how to like right quit out of a file. <laughs> oh my God! I'm actually intrigued. Um, I'm keeping the page up. For, for later engagement. Um, XY yes. says, in India, children are made to wrote, write their school stuff. Therefore, they don't really learn anything. Uh, literally asking for a friend. I'm not exactly sure what that comment means, Exabyte. Children are made to write their school stuff. They don't really learn anything. Um, look right. up definition of rote i'm on it i'm on it all right I'm thank you it. so here i'll give a little bit of like my perspective which a lot of people have the same thing um he means they have to learn by so rote means mechanical or habitual repetition of something to be learned okay it's wrote their schools okay they don't really oh, it's a learn. memorization technique based on repetition so here yeah so this is where I've seen people really struggle that that's like the exact opposite for me of what I would encourage. Like if it's a vocab test, sure. If it's like programming, I'm the exact opposite in my mentality. Cause I can't tell you how many times I've like taught a topic and it was like X, Y, and Z. And then someone later on is like, Oh, I'm trying to use X. I'm like, that doesn't have anything to do with this. And it's just, it's just because that person remembered something and is trying to make it fit versus understanding the issue and the problem. The bit like it's cliche, but this is holy shit. Somebody Whoa. go pirate software Whoa. just rated with 77. Oh. Holy oh. hell. Um, oh my God. What, yeah. Thank you. What's up? Thank you for that. Now the chat might get like super crazy. Oh my God. There it is. <laughs> um, so for like learning, I, people, um, people say this a lot. Building stuff is like the best way that I learn. And there's also the aspect of like teaching my brand, learn, build, teach. Um, which if anybody, if we have a bunch of people that just joined, if anybody's interested in joining the discord channel, am I typing in here? Um, here's the discord link for learn, build, teach. But the teach part of that is like one, because I enjoy it. And two, it's because like, it helps me learn, right? Like it helps reinforce the things that I thought I learned and so on. So that's one of the, the two biggest things for me. If you can incorporate some sort of like build something, don't just follow a tutorial, like build something on your own. And then, um, and then also like teach in some capacity, write a blog post, do a video, just speak it out loud. What's, What's the tell me about your work thing? Is that? Yeah, I was wondering that too. Is that a thing? So I'm like Chris on code also did it. And I'm assuming Chris on code is just doing it because other people are. <laughs> I, I, 
Is that a thing that I don't know about? I I'm I legitimately don't someone, know. Someone someone needs to, uh, means we want to know about your work. Oh, just James. Like, like my job or I. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Somebody help clarify for me. I'm I'm a noob here. I don't. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Your, your work. work. It's not that complicated. Capehe says. All right. So I work, for. I'm telling you everything. Can you dunk? Uh, no, I can't stream. dunk. I can't dunk, your unfortunately. Your stream and your programming, et cetera. Sweet. All right. So today's stream, uh, one, if you're new to the channel, I am James Q. Quick, a developer, speaker, and a teacher. I do a lot of YouTube videos, articles, streams, that sort of stuff. And with me, I've got Justin Chow, who uh, runs an amazing Instagram, is on Twitter, has YouTube, has a podcast that you should check out called Chow Codes. And we've been talking about the things that kind of come alongside of being a programmer, the things that uh, are not just like writing code and the things that it can have impact on your career. And a lot of that is, uh, well, one, we talked about like building brands and building audiences and the things that that can help lead to and the reason you might want to intentionally do that. We were just talking about like, how do you learn and how do you effectively learn and how do you like in, um, instill the things that you've been exposed to and like really understand them instead of just like memorizing things. Um, on a slightly more personal work note, I work at, uh, oh yeah, I work in statement. That's it. Mic drop. Boom. Um, I work at all zero and uh, shout out to all zero. Um, I get to do this on work time to be engaged and just kind of hanging out with the community, which is super nice. Uh, we do authentication authorization for developers. So if you're looking to build login and other authentication and security things into your applications, that's where we really shine. Um, so yeah, whoa! That you can do this on work time. The true mic drop, yeah, mic drop. Um, it's I was cool. About to say they pay you for this? That's awesome. It's yeah. It's one of the interesting things about being in developer relations. Which shout out to Capehe, who is now in Devrel at Sanity. But um, like the job is is to earn trust, right? And part of that is just being being a natural part of the community. It's engaging with people. It's answering questions, whether. A lot of times they're not related to all zero, um, but just earning trust. And that's the stuff that I enjoy, right? Like I enjoy our conversations. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy learning and, and hearing about other people's perspectives and stuff too. So yeah, it is um, for me, it's the best job in the world. And I am super excited that I get to do this every day. Yeah, that's awesome. Shit. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? Good well, Lord. Ha so have you, <laughs> we haven't talked about this. Have you ever thought about like DevRel as being something that you might be interested in a good mix of like doing this sort of stuff with technical? Uh, I honestly didn't even know it was a thing. Until okay. Now. Yeah, and so, I mean like, so now I'm maybe <laughs> totally open to it. I, 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 I will be willing to give it a shot. Cause I mean like, I, I feel as a content creator, I feel like DevRel might, come to you a little bit easier than most you know what i mean like you have that personality that people kind of click with um so it's easy to maybe transition to that i don't know just because i don't have that role maybe you can like go into it a little bit more but i now, now that i know it's a thing i might even like consider <laughs> now, now you're super interested yeah yeah um so i'll give let me give a couple a couple links here for people to check out one go check out um go subscribe or not subscribe. I got to stop doing that on Twitch because that's a paid thing. Go follow the <laughs> Auth0 channel. Um, I'm actually on there now two times a week or so. And then we've got the rest of the team is going to be on there also doing fun stuff. Um, so go do that. We're doing a lot more on YouTube also. So uh, the YouTube for Auth0 is in there as well. And then I'll get a little bit selfish here. I'm going to give my YouTube link because yes. one of my most recent videos is about DevRel. And it's about my experience being a developer advocate how I started my career at Microsoft doing that, and then why I got back into it now with Auth0. Um, so like, just to kind of build on your point of like, you've never, didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that was a thing. I applied at Microsoft for regular software development job, and I got turned down twice. And they liked me as a candidate, but not for those specific roles. And they said, we've got this technical evangelist role. What would you think about that? And I was like, I wanna work at Microsoft, so yes. And the rest is history. That's what I started my career as. I didn't know anything about it. Um, luckily, I realized that I really like it. And after going away from that and doing software development for uh, three years at FedEx, I realized for me, I wanted to get back into doing community stuff, doing more content, that sort of stuff. So that's why uh, that's why I now get to do 
uh, the stuff full time. Yeah. And I mean, now that I'm like, I, I just looked it up and kind of got like a general gist of uh, developer role and all that stuff. Like, you know, building, building a small community on Instagram already and having to like branch that out and now um, be an engaging person and things like that. Like I feel just kind of, it now draws me more into developer relations. Like now I'm like very, very yeah. curious and it's like blowing my mind that I never even really saw this as a thing before. You'll probably um, like now, if you pay attention, you'll see how many DevRel people there are. Like it'll be in their bios and an avocado oh icon God, is something that people uh, use a lot for like advocate. So they'll use the avocado. So if you see that, Oh really? That's usually uh, yeah. Developer. I've advocate seen of some sort. so many and I was just like, Oh, they like avocados. All right. Yeah. That's what I didn't even, I didn't even realize at first for a while too. I was just like, why is avocados a thing? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean like, I like avocados. So maybe it's like a really good fit. Um, I, I love I avocados know. too. Yeah. Um, so, Maybe all DevRels are just like avocado people. Uh, that's exactly which uh, we have a brand at All Zero called Avocado Labs, where we do uh, kind of a meetup every two weeks, oh, and we will actually so uh, stream this on the All Zero Twitch channel. So go check out and follow the All Zero Twitch channel. Um, Xbyte says uh, they have to leave. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you coming. Um, got a question in the chat. How do you learn so many things? What are your learning sources? Um, for me, I have lots, um, all of my web development knowledge really started from YouTube videos and Udemy courses, Udemy courses you can get for 10 bucks and you can get some really sick courses. They literally changed my life. So those are two of the big ones. There's tons of uh, places to find articles, uh, scotch IO, Chris, if you're still here, hanging out in the background, um, is one of my favorites, love scotch. So they've got amazing articles that I read a ton. Twitter is huge. I do so much on Twitter and just engage and like follow so many people on Twitter because I take in and soak in so much information from there. And then I uh, listen to podcasts. I create content. So I force myself to learn for that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. What about what are some of your best resources for learning? I mean, that's pretty much the same for me is a okay. lot of YouTube, a lot of Udemy. Um, Twitter is a, kind of a slept on source for, for yeah. knowledge. And then, yep. uh, medium articles aside from scotch and dev.2 mm -hmm. like dev.2 is another well, one yeah yeah dev.2 and medium are kind of the ones where i point to and um code academy is another is another big platform mm. that i use as well yeah uh, for for learning just because it's a different pace uh when it comes to like videos and reading like it's actual like engaging written content in a way um that's interactive so i feel like just the interactive part is um is what helps me too. So yep. those are kind of like the same resources that I use with yeah. some added ones. Definitely. Um, Chris on, Chris on code. Did I hear scotch? I'll bring some over. Um, mm -hmm. whenever, whenever Chris and I get to see each other in person five years from now, when things allow us to do so, um, <laughs> yeah, might be a little too early, but <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe 10. <laughs> um, I, I like, have tasted scotch in my life and I'm not a liquor or a scotch drinker, but I will be looking forward to having some scotch with you, Chris, eventually. Um, at a Patitar, uh, another question, uh, which channel do you pick? Shout out to like everyone we have in the chat right now. Uh, we've got chow codes, uh, Danny Thompson, I think is looking to do more stuff on YouTube. Chris on code has stuff. Web dev simplified is in here. Uh, Gwen, uh, which is uh, Faraday Academy was in here as well. Uh, code stacker is Jesse Hall on YouTube who, if you get your YouTube links, throw them in the chat. Cause I love promoting the amazing stuff that people uh, do. And there's lots of people in here that have amazing content. So if you have your YouTube links or if you have other links you'd like to share, throw them in the chat. Oh, I'm throwing mine in there. So shameless plug. In Boom. The chat. Yeah. I need to, I need to set up some, um, some more, automated Twitch bot stuff. So like if people ask me for like command info or command James or something, I could send them like all of my links oh, and then maybe go. I could set it up to do like, here's all the all zero links. Oh wait, shout out to another thing you got to check out since we're here. Um, <laughs> all zero is running a hackathon Ooh. Uh, first ever and uh, you should go check it out. So it's going to be in early August, August 7th through the 9th. And it's all virtual online, obviously. Um, so you have a couple days to hack. Um, I actually, this is kind of cool. I've been inspired by watching uh, your videos and your Instagram and stuff. 
um, I am creating the promo video for the hackathon. It's going to be like Yay! 25 seconds. And they gave me like some different like clips and suggestions on text. And it's like almost ready. I think I've got maybe some more feedback to handle on the text, but I think it's pretty good. And people seem to be happy with it. I'm stoked about it. Like I, again, back to my YouTube channel have done like two of the very different type videos for me that are not just regular screencasts. And I've really had a lot of fun with it. And I like, for me, I'm super proud of the way they turned out. So, um, so yeah, anyway, go check out the Aussie Euro hackathon, sign up if you're interested. I'd love to have you participate. I'm pumped. Yeah. Do the different kind of videos for sure. When you branch away from like what you think you're not yeah. what you think, but what your initial niche was like in terms of, the style of videos you do is so much fun. Like yep. when, as soon as I started doing vlog style, uh, vlog style content, I was just like, this is a lot harder, but it's kind of fun. Like I kind of like is, how yeah. difficult it is to piece together like a whole day's worth of content, but it's pretty fun. Yeah. And, and like, I, I feel like one of those real YouTubers, right? Like the more traditional like YouTubers, yes. right? The, <laughs> yeah, it's I feel just like a Peter McKinnon. Yeah. I feel like it's just kind of cool to like be in that, um, in that realm. So, yeah. um, and I think, I think like YouTube, especially when, cause if you look at it for me, at least like it's, I'm on Instagram. So like, that's where my main audience is from. It's hard to become a personable or a, a relatable person when I'm like behind the camera and behind a caption yeah. all the time. Yeah. So it's really, really nice to branch out and like be this personality yeah. like in video format and taking you through what I'm going through topics. I want to talk about topics that we should be talking about all these different things, right? Just being like a relatable person and a personality that you know of on YouTube is kind of like really, really cool to grow. Yeah. So I, that's been, I've said that one of my goals for like two years now has been to add more personality in my videos. And I really haven't up until recently. And so that's like another specific reason why I'm excited to have done the stuff that I've done um, and feel like it turned out good, which by the way, like we're doing this live. Did, what is your hard cutoff? Don't you have a time cutoff that you have something to do? Um, I just have to coach at 3 PM. It's one twenty right now. So I mean, so we could go for a whole another hour and a half. I won't do that, yeah. but <laughs> just making sure we're not like encroaching yeah, on yeah, your no, cutoff no. time. No worries. Um, well, I'm, so I wonder, like we've got 47 people here, which is a huge number for me. So that's really cool. Do, are there any questions that people want to like have addressed? Like this is a long stream and like I, I originally invited you and I was like, oh, like 45 minutes and we'll be good. And then we did, we've just gone long and it's been fun. Um, yeah, no, it's been a blast. And that's the thing is right? it's like the same thing with the podcast. We went so long and it was just yeah. like, what? It's, you, you just look down. Hour? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, let's do, let's do a few minutes and see, uh, if people have any questions in the chat, uh, marketing, branding, like building a brand, uh, being on social media, the benefits you get with that, doing a podcast, YouTube videos. Uh, if you have any last minute questions about those topics, uh, let me know. And then our pan, love the stream. Thanks. Our pan is a super big supporter. Our pan is in the learn, build, teach, uh, discord, which, uh, been super excited to have you there and ask questions and contributing. So thank you for that. And then also has been an avid supporter of like all the streams that people in the channel are doing. So thank you for, uh, for coming out and doing that. Um, do you, do you don't have a blog? Do you? Mm -mm. Okay. I, I treat my Instagram as my blog. That's a great point. Um, I, that's actually a really, I like deeply profound, even though it doesn't seem like it. Because like your, your reason for doing that was just to like show your journey. Right. And this gives people yeah. a way to like relate and you can do like little snippets of just saying like, Oh, I'm up working on so-and-so and, and here's a picture and blah, blah, blah. And it obviously worked out really well for you. Um, NDX dev who is on vacation now, I think from university, uh, about to start the partying in the next week, I think, but, um, how to start blogging, what to talk about as a beginner how to start blogging. Like if you want to go just the simplest route, get on dev.2. Don't worry about building your own blog platform. Uh, just get on dev.2 and do that. If you want to take on a personal project and want to learn more about web development, build a blog and you could do it with WordPress. You could do it with, if you know react, you can get into like a Gatsby site and you could do embedded markdown files. If you want to branch out and do a headless CMS, like I do with shout out to sanity and Capehe in the stream. If you want to do that, you could reach for a headless CMS, tons of different options, but 
I wouldn't overwhelm yourself about trying to build it yourself. If that's not something you're ready to do, start on dev.2 and just get used to posting and post about very small things that, uh, that you learn. I think the thing as content creators, you start to pick up on, but I forget also is every, every single thing that I learn, someone else doesn't know yet. Right. And it's just a matter of experience. It's not that I know a whole lot. I just happen to know this thing that someone else out there doesn't know. So, um, really tiny example. If you do like an anchor tag and you do a link where you want it to, uh, go open up in a new tab, I still don't remember how to do that by hand. There's like the no refer and target is blank thing. I don't, I couldn't write that from scratch. I created a blog post on that and it's a really simple one, but it's a great reference for me and maybe for other people. So like the small things that you learn, write a really tiny post and maybe just get in the habit of like doing that and maybe build up and do longer and longer ones. hundred percent. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's like the great like intro to it. And it, for me, I look at it as like a documentation mm -hmm. point of view, which is like the same thing you're talking about, right? It's like, yep. as you learn as a beginner, you just want to write down, like if you, if you take notes as a beginner with like, which most people do, as self-taught people, like you should be making blog posts off of your notes. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you learn through your notes, just kind of like create that into a small yep. post and just make that right. Like, and, it, and it's small, super easy. Yeah. And small is good. Like I, I can't tell you, like if I'm searching for a specific, how do you do X? I don't necessarily want to see anything else. Like people just yeah. scroll through until you show them until the code snippet and Chris on mm -hmm. code who runs uh, scotch, uh, would tell you the same thing. Like, and he would tell me in my writing, like, Oh, we don't need that many words. Like they're not going to read them anyway. <laughs> so just like get right down to it. Um, yeah. so yeah, I would love, um, NDX dev, try it out, write something, send it in the, in the discord and share it and we'll give feedback and just build on that from there. Um, imposter syndrome is a top, I mean, this is a huge topic. Um, I'm oh, sorry to answer one last question from NDX dev. It's okay to write blog posts on small things. Yes. Do that and grow from that and get used to it. Um, it's okay to do whatever you want. Yeah. Right. <laughs> someone, it's, someone there is asked, no right or wrong. <laughs> yeah. Someone asked on Twitter. I think it was, I think it was Catalan Pitt that asked on Twitter is like, would you prefer that I tweet about X, Y, or Z? I was like, I don't know. Just like tweet about whatever the fuck you want. Exactly. <laughs> like it's, no, it's really it. Like, <laughs> like who am I to tell you who you, who, who or what you're going to talk about? Right? Like same thing for the blog post. It's if you want to talk about that, that that's fine. Like do that. Yeah. As long as you're enjoying it and you're happy doing it and it doesn't feel like a burden, just do it. Now then if you get used to it and you want to grow and you want to like continue to grow it, then pay more attention to what people read more. You can ask, like ask for feedback along the way, but pay more attention to feedback, pay more attention to what people get interested in because you're trying to grow something. But to start out, don't overwhelm yourself with all these other thoughts that you have. Just write something and see what happens. Share it, write another thing. You'll get better as you go and you'll learn more about, um, like if you're trying to like grow a brand around it, you'll learn more about how to do that along the way. So, mm -hmm. um, Imposter syndrome. Uh, imposter syndrome is real. Imposter syndrome happens for me. It happens for me almost every day. Um, I talk to anytime I talk to someone who knows more about something that I don't know, I get imposter syndrome. The difference for me is I've learned to accept that. I know that if I don't know something, that's okay. And I'm comfortable saying I don't know. And I look at that situation and I tell myself, or I ask myself, the thing that I didn't know that I'm kind of self-conscious about is it something that I should know? And if it is, I go and invest the time to learn that thing a little bit better, or at least get aware awareness of whatever it is like doing an anchor tag and opening up in a new tab, right? Like I, I don't know how to do that live on a stream when I'm writing code and I get a little nervous cause I'm wondering how many people out there, like he doesn't know how to do that, but that's okay because you don't know everything. My thing is I've just kind of come to accept that. I don't know if you have any specific like imposter syndrome feelings or things that you use to help deal all, with that all the time. Like, <clears throat> again, like I think the thing that everyone should understand is that the people that you look up to, like you said, it are going to deal with it. And I just saw Danny say that he deals with it a lot too. Right? Yep. Like the people that you don't expect to go through it, go through it probably more so than you do. Like, yep. It's, it just comes, it just comes with it. Right. It just comes with no, like, the, the passion to learn something, I feel like imposter syndrome just kind of comes around with it, right? The thing that I found that was helpful for me was when I was making my last vlog, I had 
for the first time, like I was actually like coding on the video. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that hit me was who's going to watch this. Cause I'm learning TypeScript. So like not very well versed in it yet. Right. I'm still learning it, but I'm in my mind while I was editing it, I was like, who's going to watch this and start talking shit and being like, <laughs> you know, why, wh what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Like t t talking all this. And I'm like going to see it in the comments, but at the same time, I'm going to, I, I now look at it from the perspective of, okay, I'm going to put this work out. It's probably not the best. I it's probably like someone's going to say something, Yep. but when they do, I'm going to take it as just, you know, feedback. It's going to be harsh wow. feedback, but if I look at it as feedback, now I have an opportunity to grow. So yep. whether or not I felt like I knew it or not, you, that, that imposter syndrome feeling is going to be there, but kind of take those moments of like, this is a now learning opportunity I can take for myself and now grow as a person and as a developer um, now. So I kind of now have learned to embrace those, those feelings. Absolutely. And I'm pulling back up um, your podcast. And mm -hmm. this reminds me a lot of the how to deal with negativity episode, which our pan just said that he loves your interesting. Uh, wow. Not I read a comment while I was speaking. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> He loves your energy, close to interesting. Um, loves your energy. It and Yeah, it's close. And I think you'll really appreciate it if you go listen to that podcast episode. I think you'll, um, yeah. you'll really appreciate that one as well. That one was an interesting episode because I recorded that one at like 12 a.m. at night. Oh, really? And I okay. was like, I went on a, there was a topic that came up. I think someone DM'd me something. And then I just, I, I was like, okay, I have to record this episode. Like, there's no way I don't go yeah. through this, so I had to do it. So and I think that one was purely off the cuff. I was gonna say I think you could feel that too. Like the energy there was different, and it would it yeah. felt like the kind of thing where you're like in that mood and you're like I gotta get this out there, or I just like mm -hmm. I won't be able to let it go. Um, exactly. You talking about like feedback? One of the things that I I try to live by is. There's like a lot of idiots out there and a lot of people who try to like bring you down and to like leave negative comments for no reason. What I do is I read all of them and I ask myself, does first, does this person actually seem like they're coming from a perspective of good intent? Are they trying to be helpful? If they are, no matter how harsh it is, I need to look at it. Now, just because I look at it and really think about it doesn't mean it then becomes something I think I need to change. People can give feedback as long as I consider it and I like think about whether or not it's something I need to do. I don't necessarily need to change, make a change on it if I don't think it's something I need to make a change on. But I at least give myself the honest conversation internally to see if it is. If it is, then yeah, I, I wanna go and make that improvement. But I am pretty quick to ignore things, like I say, that, that seem like they don't come with good intent. Um, and if they do, then you consider it. And if it makes sense, you learn and grow from it. If not, like you keep moving on because you're doing your thing anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Like that's the thing now is when I see some, like some comments like that too, I think of it the same way. It's just like, are they maliciously or is like, is this like a malevolent like comment yep. or whatever? Right. If it isn't, then I'm going to be able a little bit more open book to them and kind of try to come to like some common ground because obviously there's like some sort of disagreement here or there um, or they're just misunderstanding something. So that I've started to take that, uh, that route now in terms of those comments before I used to like immediately default to, Oh, they're, they're a little heated. Like they, don't, <laughs> they feel something bad. Of, like they don't like me or whatever, but I used it as motivation. Yep. I was just like, Oh, someone doesn't like me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> time to prove myself. Like I'm ready to go. Like put me on the, Cooling on the court coach. And I was going to say, that's yeah. what you like, you talked about in that episode was just like the basketball mentality, mm -hmm. which for me, like I'm people probably would be surprised at some of my like basketball attitude and mentality. If you saw me in a heated game, cause like yeah. the like natural Memphis in me <laughs> comes out, but it, it always <laughs> starts with, I'm never, I'm never the first one to start like talking shit to somebody, but if somebody talks shit to me, yeah. then I'm like ready to go. For two yeah. Times. Yeah. Uh, we no, no, I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I'm going to be like a super humble player if you're playing with me. But it's the moment you want to start talking mess, yep. oh, it's game on. Like, I'm ready to go. Like, my mouth is going to run, and I will, like, I'll put it in. Like, one, uh, nah, one of these I'm days we need down. to. Yeah, I know, right? 
We we got to get together on the court one day. Is your agency yes, using WordPress to build websites? I um, I think I just sent some awkward audio through from a random YouTube video, so I apologize for people out there if you heard <laughs> that. Um, I was trying to go and grab a link. Um, Sioria said, um, interested in Jamstack. I created um, a Jamstack crash course on YouTube. If you haven't checked it out, uh, might be worth looking at. And I love, there was one of the comments. Uh, oh, Scrabble talking to Sior about being on this panel, if you followed that chat, said, try not to feel intimidated. You are on this panel for a reason. You have a perspective. And that's what we talked about earlier, right? Like everybody has a perspective. Everybody has experience. Everybody has yeah. like your life and, and like you're there for a reason. Anytime, anytime you've earned your spot somewhere, like you earned your spot, you are there for a reason. That's one of the things that like I've tried to hype my wife up about a lot is like she's gotten jobs where she maybe didn't have the most experience compared to like other candidates and then she feels like they did her a favor and i'm like like they didn't do you a favor like they hired you because regardless of your experience they thought you were the best candidate right so if yep. you if you get a job or you get hired or whatever it is like you earn that spot and yeah have some have some like self-confidence just to know that like you earned whatever position you're in at this point I th and I think that's super interesting too, because aside from like you wanting to be there and things like that, like you, there's, there's a, there's something to you as an individual, like there's a certain vibe and drive that you have that you omit that you may not even like really realize. That's what intrigues me when I bring people on. It's like, mm -hmm. what's your main driver? What's the, what, what make, what gives off this vibe to you? Like, I want to know. Yep. Um, what's your what's the motive why are you so driven there's always something underlying there's always a story that is going to come from having a chip on your shoulder or being so oh. motivated to do something like i want to know what it is what that, that is yeah is exactly that's making you get to this point or what made you get to the point that you're at right now and what now is the is the driver what now is the story that you want to write like the one thing I heard from a podcast from Kevin Hart and Joe Rogan is like, we're all writing our own books. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what, what are you going to write in your next chapter? Yeah. What's, what's, what's the story? What's the story of your book? Like, how are you writing it? And now I'm like intrigued to know what chapter are we on in your book and what's, <laughs> what, what's it looking like towards the end, towards the conclusion. And what, yeah. What the next one is. Exactly. And that's kind of so like, how I look at it. yeah, that's kind of, we talked about early on having have an idea of somewhere you want to go or something you want to accomplish and it's not going to happen overnight but you can work towards that thing and that might be a long ass exactly. chapter but at oh. the end of the chapter like if you can tell that story to say you did x y and z like you did it because that that was your goal and you were able to accomplish that which is really exactly. um i don't know when you're able to look back and like pay attention to your wins even even if they're super small it's a really um like inspiring thing i think just kind of like internally 100 percent hundred percent um i know kape he said asked a question like earlier and it was how many years have you been coding justin i did a tweet today asking that so i'm wondering where you land um i'm coming up on one year um if you if you don't count any of the on and offs that i had prior to september of 2019 mm -hmm. i've been consistently at this since september so um, we're coming up on a year nice what are um I know TypeScript is one you said you've been getting into recently. I think you've done like React has been a focus for you. Any other like any other names of technologies or anything you've been interested in or, or looking at? Um, I mean, Vue is always on the list. I, no. I don't want to like, you know, do the full three like in terms of frameworks. I just wanted to like get really good at one. Uh, oh wow, you got another. We get, yeah, uh, Clarkio, what's up? Thank you for the raid. I appreciate it. This yes, is sir. This is this the is big. Yeah, today. this is this is absolutely <laughs> <Some> wild. <Poppin' laughs> oh my goodness, what happened? I thought July fourth was like. A couple <laughs> weeks ago. Yeah, this is. Uh, all right, let's adding even more to the chat. Clarkio, how did your how did your stream go? What were you uh, what were you covering over there? Love to hear about it. Sorry, we both both got distracted. What um. What were you saying? Oh, so what's what's next on the list? Um, uh, uh, view. I think the next. Yeah. Yeah. So I was saying view was on the list, but I'm kind of like iffy. I do want to learn Angular. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think kind of the next thing for me is uh, learning Go, and Node. Okay. Cool. Um, 
so obviously node first since i'm javascript, JavaScript. First. yep yeah um but i've always been interested in learning back end too to see if that's a route that i'm willing to take as well um, yeah so if you aside from the front end sure have you have you not done any back end stuff so far i've done a little bit of node and a little bit of go here and there like just okay. small dabbling i haven't really delved into it too much just yet just because i wanted to really focus on like my foundations in the front end before i moved on like i didn't want to like skimp out on it like i felt like i can't just like leave without knowing a couple more things yeah um that's fair yeah i think yeah yeah go sorry on. go ahead <laughs> you're fine <laughs> uh i was just saying like i've I like because my CSS is pretty bad, so I was like, I wanted to get a good framework and do some groundwork there. And before I moved on, because I wanted to, once I moved to the back end side of things, one, I don't want to like, um, what's the word? I don't want to overload myself with work. Like, I don't want to mm. overload myself knowing I still have things I need to work on in front end, but then right. go into the back end side of things. Um, but also, I want to have a good gr like foundation of front end before I move into the back end, so that while I'm learning back end, it's not like an issue to where I can just create a full stack app and not have to go back and forth. You know what I mean? Like, of not knowing both, essentially. Yep. Yeah. Fair enough. I think I think that's one of the things that's good that you like are conscious of that because I think a lot of people, myself included, move too fast sometimes and try to like adopt a new technology or learn some backend stuff or whatever. So I, I, I really appreciate like having the perspective of like, I feel like I've got more to learn to really feel like I'm in a good space with what I'm looking at now. And then I want to move on. Um, yeah, you got some support from, uh, Danny Thompson. I think Danny, you do go microservices. Is that the backend that you, I think that's the backend you use. He said he supports the go, uh, decision, very lightweight, very fast. I've never used go. Um, I've, heard more and more people use it and love it. Um, so I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, there was something, Oh, so, um, without having, I'm kind of curious cause I don't know the answer to this. So we didn't really talk about like portfolio projects. Had we done that, which is, uh, one of the things I wanted to ask about was the, uh, the swag store, uh, chow mm -hmm. apparel. I'll send a link in here mm -hmm. and like shout out on video. I don't know how the best way to get this on the camera, but this is, uh, from your store, the developer hoodie which is uh, super comfy. I'll, I'll grab a link and throw it in there as well. Um, how and why did you build that? So um, I built the store just because it was, again, like an inspiration from Krishan. Like he had done his thing and he was like, yo, you need to do this too. Like this is, this is an easy business for you to run. Like you, uh, and also just having like an actual business come out from the brand from my personal brand is something that I've wanted to branch out into as well. I just didn't yeah. know how what or that what, was going yeah. to look like, yeah. you know? So I thought a apparel line, uh, although very like generic and maybe not cliche, but I feel like a lot of people just kind of tend to go that route is like you, you kind of see it and you're like, Oh, another apparel line, <laughs> oh, another dev jumping into that. I wanted to make it like personable to me. So it doesn't feel that way. Yeah. Um, like literally all the designs are just something that I had inspiration from made it on Canva and then sent it off and made, got the shirt made. So, so a little nugget in there. Canva is what you use for doing those designs. Yes. Sweet. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Canva is the main, um, program I use or website that I use to uh, design some of the things. And I'm no designer by any means. Like a lot yeah. of this just comes from inspiration. Um, but you know, it, it was something that I wanted to branch out to. And I have a whole thing where, you, you know, I've recently become unemployed from my IT job, right? And that happened in May. And the feeling of having a full-time job and knowing that your boss or whoever has has your your job essentially in their grasp and they have the option of letting you go. Yeah. Like, that's not up to me. It doesn't matter how much work I put in. It doesn't matter how good the work is. There's always circumstances such as COVID, you know, yep, unexpected right. things happen mm -hmm. where they can drop you. And I hate that feeling of knowing regardless of where I'm at, my job isn't secure. And I hate, I yeah. hate that, that, um, uh, that weird feeling of just not knowing. So I wanted to start 
to now use the personal brand and the platforms that I'm on right now to make steady sources of income to be able to be all right if I lose a job at some point. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that's, I think, like I, I've made some money, not not a salary's worth on courses. And that's kind of my goal is like, one, maybe I can do that full time. Um, and then two, in the meantime, like I can continue to make some money on the side. And like I make enough money right now that I've, I'm comfortable paying for things to help make that better. Buying audio and video equipment, um, software tools and things that I can use. So it's, it's actually a really nice feeling. And like I've made enough um, extra in addition to things that I want to buy that like my wife and I have a goal of paying off our house in six years where a lot of that comes from just our, like our regular money, but we're trying to be really aggressive of like doing that. And then like, if we don't have a mortgage, like then I'm, I'm, I'm even less required to like work a full-time job. Right. Cause our bills are so much exactly. lower. Um, exactly. So yeah, I would, I would definitely, I love, I love that you did this as an example. Um, Cause it seems, it seems very attainable, not necessarily easy, just attainable for people, especially um, like when you mentioned you haven't done any backend and I'm actually curious what, what's the tech behind the site? Like, how did you build the site? So this is primarily on Shopify. Okay. Uh, yeah. So primarily on Shopify, which is another thing that I wanted to learn, yep. which is why I kind of delved, Super useful. delved more into it. Yeah. Exactly. Cause you know, e-commerce is now going to be a huge thing. Not that it wasn't before, but e-commerce is now a bigger topic because of the times we're in. So, I was just like, okay, let me delve into this platform, learn it a little bit, and then just try to uh, branch out into it more. Things like learning Liquid, like doing Shopify themes or things like that, right? It's, yep. Now I'm a little bit more familiar with the environment, familiar with what goes into building a store on Shopify. So now I get real experience, one, having my own store, two, mm-hmm. how the platform works, now three, is the part that I'm working on is now how do I do this on my own and implement Shopify as the platform into my own yeah. uh, sites yep. that I do for potential clients or whatever. See that. Yeah. I've, that's one of the things that I haven't had a specific reason to get into, but I think would be extremely useful for, for that exact reason. Like that, that is enough mm-hmm. of a reason to have interest in that skill because you can apply it. And like, if you take on freelance clients, like now you can have, you can create like a store for them. And that's what a lot of people, I can't tell you how many people have had like, Oh, I've got this perfect idea. I want to sell X. And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't really know how to do that. And also don't have a lot of time. Uh, but now like you could potentially take on those sort of projects and you can say like, I've done it myself. I know how it works. Exactly. And like the indirect thing that comes from this specifically too, that I kind of planned a little bit as well prior to making the web or prior to making the store was learning more of the business side of being a personal brand. So how to sell. Yeah. Right. It's, right. You can make all this stuff. Sorry. I just hit my mic. <laughs> you can make all this stuff and it's great, right? Like you can make things very appealing, but obviously like first day on launch, you're not going to get very many sales if you didn't market it correctly. Yep. If you didn't hype this up the way that you want it to. So for me, you know, having my current Instagram following, it's now a challenge of how can I market something that, is in like directly related to me, but like, how do I get it to now your attention? How do I get it to people who don't know of me? How do I get their attention? And not only they not only grab their attention because that's part of it, but then also like after you get their attention, the thing that you have is enticing enough to bring them in. And I think this is like, I look at myself and content that I create. I feel like I'm up there in terms of quality of content. Like I feel like I do pretty good stuff. My biggest struggle is I, I don't have, and I'm learning and Code Stacker is saying the same thing in the chat, the marketing side and the branding side and getting yourself out there and getting people aware and then making it look appealing enough. Like something as simple as write, like writing copy text, like copy for a course or like a creative tweet that like piques people, people's interest. Like this is really difficult for me. Um, so it's something that like as a content creator in general, there's a whole other side that comes to that than just writing code or just filming a video. Like there's, how do you package all this stuff together and then try to grow it and get people's eyes on it? Um, exactly. One of the things I would like to do, I, what's the latest on shipping? Does this only ship to the States? Um, I am working on numbers for international, but yes, it's okay. only in the States for right now. Um, very soon I'll have international, but it's, I mean, 
international shipping is like right now in terms of the times are crazy just because there are places that don't accept places like yeah uh, packages from the u.s or you know shipping costs are how do you price that in so i'm i'm like figuring all that out right now um in, in terms of the numbers but we're, we'll have that soon okay um one of the things i need to i need to get more formal about this i would like to give away something for like i would pay for it not like you give it away mm. so i'm not putting you on the spot um <laughs> i would like to give something away from your store but i don't know the best way to do that in here and I don't know how many people are in the U.S. and if that would be a fair thing for people. Like if the majority of people are not in the U.S., would that be fair to offer it to the chat? I'm not really sure. Um, I've also, I haven't done, um, just give it to, yeah, just give it to Danny. That seems fair. Um, done. Um, I haven't done, and Danny does a lot of this stuff too, a course giveaway where um, either one of my courses or like I will pay for a couple of courses uh, from Udemy for someone. So how about I do this? Um, if people are interested in either a free Udemy course or um, a piece of swag from uh, chowapparel.com, um, join the Discord channel. And this is not super self-promotional. Like I think it's a great community that would be uh, worthwhile for people that are here. It's called Learn, Build, Teach. And we talk about sharing resources and asking questions and uh, just kind of working with people uh, collectively, uh, collaboratively. I think it's great. So if you're interested, um, join the Discord and send me a message, and I will I'll figure out a way to do uh, maybe a couple of swag giveaways for people that are in uh, the states, and then a couple of Udemy courses for um, for people that are not. Just try to make that make that fair. Um, Sierra said she did uh, digital marketing before she started learning to code. Um, so maybe, maybe she's offering her services. What go ahead and throw your like hourly rate in the chat to see who needs some, uh, some marketing assistance. Um, not in the States, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. I know you're not. I'm sorry. That's what, um, that's what sucks, but I'll try to, I'll try to give away a couple of courses on Udemy or something to kind of uh, balance it out. So if you're interested, uh, join that discord, uh, server, come hang out, send me a message in there. Um, and then I'll, I'll do a couple of giveaways. Um, Arpan says also the hoodies do look fire. Yes. Um, like the, I'm like so stoked about this and I'm so paranoid <laughs> because I never have anything like pure white. And I'm so like, every time I walk somewhere, I'm like, all right, don't get close to me. Don't like eat anything <laughs> nearby. Like I don't want to mess it up. Um, yeah. cause it That's is me with Jay's. Yeah. <laughs> That's me with Jay's on. I'm like, yo, don't, 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 don't walk touch. near yeah. me. Yeah. Like six feet. I'm six trying feet. not to crease. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's great, like the stuff on here is super sweet. I actually, uh, separately, I would like to ask you some like questions about logistics and what it takes to set the stuff up. Cause I want to do, sure. um, some stuff like this too. Um, I have no idea what it would look like or what logos and things would be, but, um, yeah. I think it's such a cool idea and it's such a great project. Um, especially as like a demo to just show like without even having back end experience, like you can build a product that you can make money from and share with the world. Exactly. So exactly yeah. and the nice thing about this one too was that you can start it with like very little capital you don't need yeah. any, a lot of upfront money to do something right. like this yeah so sweet um all right i think i'm like this is two hours i'm i'm winding down yeah, crazy um, this is crazy yeah this has been fantastic though like our conversation has been fun thank you so much for being here thank you to um what, what did we say? The most famous chat of all time. <laughs> yes. The most famous yeah. chat of all time. You know what I mean? Like literally I'm, I'm like starstruck still. Yeah. <laughs> starstruck still. Starstruck still. still. Yeah. Wow, all right. Really hard to say. Everybody, everybody try to say starstruck still five times really fast and see what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got, we've got some dedicated people on here. So thank you everybody for being here and hanging out. I really enjoyed it. Um, if you have ideas on things you'd like to see in the future, um, definitely let me know. Uh, but yeah, one last shout out to everybody that's here. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Justin, thanks for hanging out. I'm looking forward to having more things that we talk about and collaborate on as yeah, we, uh, sure. we go forward to, and then other people I'm super excited for whenever we get to actually like see each other in person one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, um, I mean, it's been a lot of fun, honestly. Like it didn't even feel like two hours to be honest. I know. Like, right. Yeah. And Jesus I usually Christ. to let you know that that's, for real, I never stand. Like I will maybe stand for like forty five minutes, and I usually sit. I've stood for two hours, which I never do. So that's kind of crazy. 
That's pretty nuts, actually. I'm like, I'm, props to you because I could not stand for two hours. Yeah, usually, like, I have to, I, like, have to let it go. But also, I let That's my it. dog sit in my chair, and I didn't want to, she's sleeping. So I didn't want to, like, move oh, her out of the way either. Wait. Yeah, Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. That's interesting because I recently did a podcast standing up, and I actually enjoyed it a lot more. Yeah, it, I think it helps energy. My, like, knees and stuff, just I can't stand that long. Like, I need to sit down. But it, I think it, yeah. I think it's great. I think I have better energy. For sure. I think every podcast has to be standing up now. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, I am, I'm going to call it uh, one last. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. I appreciate it. Justin, thanks for hanging out, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace. See ya.